Hello, it's James from xrobots.co.uk. This is part two of building the real robot Iron Spider-Man. And we're using my Robot X platform, which is a real walking, talking robot. There's a build series in my channel, and some of that development is also ongoing, but we're dressing it up as different sci-fi characters. So we already dressed it up as Bender from Futurama, and last time we started the cosmetics for Spider-Man. We're going to build a sort of Iron Spider-Man, being a robot. I'm going to try and preserve some of the contours of Spider-Man, but obviously it's got robotic elements, so we need lots of opening weapons and things that you'd find in an Iron Man suit. So that's the head. We need to make the mounting for that today, so we've got the motorised neck. We already sorted out the eye mechanism last time, so his eyes have got lids, a bit like in the new Spider-Man movie. And today we're going to work our way back down the shoulders and try and do some of the upper body cosmetics. So the first bit of planning for the uh, shoulders before I can really build the neck mechanism in and I need to place everything of course including the head it's uh, in the roughly the right place I think but we'll see how that goes. So I'm going to build a kind of shoulder stroke chest piece here. So I've done some sketches you can see here and I'm going to um, do a loft between them so I've got these two which basically are going to make up the main contour over the shoulder. Then I've got another two which are going to provide a guide so that that piece is curved and we're going to do that in Fusion 360 with the loft by just selecting those two and that puts the piece in. Of course it doesn't follow those guides yet until we go to the rails dialog over here and add both of those in and then it should make a nice curved contour that goes exactly where we want it so uh, that gives us the basis for building this up. And of course I can go back and edit the sketches so if I were to go and edit this sketch and go and pull this out for instance let's just go and uh, move that up a bit ridiculous then it should update the contour there so that means I can adjust them in the future and we can just work on laying down the basic shapes. Right so I've thickened that up and mirrored it a bit to give two chest pieces I've also done the same with some sort of ab plates I've got to bear in mind there's a hinge point in the robot here now I haven't put too much surface detail on them any robotic features really because we have to put a massive iron spider-man logo on there which pretty much covers his whole torso and that's going to be partly embossed and partly a piece where bits open for instance on the shoulders so that guns and things can poke out so that's why these are massive smooth sections so far. I've done a bit of work around the neck there to add a little reset and things and I've also added this neck cylinder which I um, think helps me sort of decide if it's the right scale it looks better without the head just floating um, I think that's gonna have the motor in that turns the head and it's also gonna have the pushers all built into it so they're sort of um, contained within that cylinder which will eventually be a tube and there'll be some robotic elements coming up the back there we may put a sort of shield on the back haven't really decided but I think the head and everything is placed in the correct location. Right I've put the basic Spider-Man logo on his chest and I did that just by basically drawing various sketches on planes and doing um, cuts and cutting out solid pieces and changing the colour to black. So these at the moment are actually cut all the way through and they're all just raised out by 5mm. So I think some of these probably shouldn't be like that they should be just stuck on but we'll see how it goes. Of course printing them as separate pieces gives me the option to make them out of something translucent and to illuminate it for instance so it may well be I uh, print the chest plate and so on with all these holes in and we'll decide what to do about these pieces later. Of course Iron Spider-Man should be gold and red. I've already printed the eye surrounds in black so I think I'm going to stick with traditional Spider-Man colours but just make him a bit robotic. So here are those main parts for the chest and the abs. Obviously these ones have still got their support material in and the front ones I've removed and they've come out pretty clean. There's a bit of clean up to do on the top edge where it's printed on support material and we've now got those cutouts to insert the other pieces. So most of these I've made about two mil thick so they're nice and light. The ab plates are slightly thicker but um, that should add not too much weight to the robot. So I've decided I think I'm going to head for traditional Spider-Man colours for now. I'm not sure people will be able to determine that it's actually Spider-Man if it's red and gold, so we're going to stick some blue in there and have the logo in black. However, I'm going to make all of these as separate pieces and I'm not going to permanently fix them in, and that means I can change any of them for something translucent. Perhaps we could have the uh, head there of the spider illuminated in UV, so it's a bit like a black light. So uh, for now, basically, I've made all these parts so I, the same way I did the eyes so they've got this recessed part that fits behind and all of those can push in from the back. So now I've got to get those printed and those two panels assembled. Here 
Here are those parts, they've come out pretty well and they fit nicely into the slots there. The curved parts pretty much hold themselves in, just pop that one out because they're sort of held in by the curvature, but some of the others I'm going to need to tape in for now and I'm not going to glue them all in because basically I might want to take them out and make them into clear panels that can be illuminated. So that goes roughly there and that goes underneath. Not sure if I'm making Spider-Man or Darth Maul at the moment, but I think it's going to look pretty okay once the rest of the panels are on. We need to make some mounts for these and there's plenty of places to mount it on the chassis. But first of all, I'm actually going to work on the head mechanism. So we're going to need to move the emergency stop button, one of the battery packs and some other things. So we're going to do all of the mechanical build, then we'll think about getting these mounted with proper brackets. So there he is, uh, all in one piece in CAD. As I say, I'm going for traditional Spider-Man colours, so I've just coloured a few bits in red and blue so we can get an idea of what it's going to be like. Of course, there will be shoulder bells on there and some bigger arms, so hopefully his head will uh, fall back into proportion. But let's have a look at those head mechanics. So I've put the new head back on there with the eyes in and the internal supports and so on. So uh, basically, we're going to be building this kind of tower that the head sits on. So the bottom piece there is attached to the aluminium extrusion, and that's got a piece of M12 studding in it now let's just get rid of the head and the upper part there and the uh, other upper part so inside we can see we've got this kind of hole here to mount studding in and we've got a servo here that's going to mount with a gear mounted on it so the servo uh, holder there can slide in and out so I can get that gear precisely aligned and the gear of course aligns with the upper part that's got a thread cut into it like so and that's going to um, be spinning on bearings top and bottom that fit onto that m12 studding so that should run quite nicely then of course mounted on that is the actual hinge plate for the other two axes of the neck so from last time in the bottom of the neck we've got this yellow piece which uh, basically is a kind of thing that holds the two axes in to allow it to rotate sideways and if we get rid of one side of the head we can see that has another pivot point that allows it to rotate backwards and forwards so that piece is screwed on the top of our rotating turret controlled by that servo at the bottom and then we've got two spaces for two more servos here which are going to push levers up to this green part so that will allow the head to move in those axis it's a bit like how Ultron's head works other than I'm rotating these servos with the neck this time instead of leaving that behind which caused a few issues before Alright, so here are the pieces. We've got the servo mounted there, we've got the uh, gear screwed onto the servo horn with a number of screws, and we've got this assembly here with the studding that runs all the way through. So now this piece goes on here, and the servo can move in and out to align with those teeth as we need it to, and I can position it precisely. So that meshes and that makes our neck turn. So the servo is glued in now, and this is the range of motion we get. So it's roughly a one to two and a half ratio. So we get um, roughly 90 degrees from a servo that does just over 180. So I think that's gonna be pretty good for Spider-Man to turn his head. Right, so now this piece goes on here, and these servos push against this to push the head around. So I still need to make those servo levers, but my range of motion is something like this, up and down, and like this sideways, and of course it can turn as well. So I think that's pretty good for an animatronic Spider-Man character. So what I'm going to do is add some lumps to the top of that front bracket, which have got the holes in, and that means the two servo levers, which are attached in these bottom holes, will be able to push up there. And the reason I've done it like that is so that I can access those screw holes through the eye hole of the head. And that means I can remove it if I want to, because otherwise there's absolutely no way to get a screwdriver in to put the pivot point on. So hopefully you can just about see that screw hole in the eye there. There's one in the other eye, of course, as well, where I can get the screw in. Pretty hard to see, but those are attached with rods down to the servos that lift either way. Right, so now we've got one control that turns the head. We've got one which moves it up and down, and one which moves it sideways like that, and that's obviously using a combination of those pots and those servos. That one is just the rotation, but the other two is actually using the combination of those two at the front to determine um, how it should turn. And um, I've actually built a mixer in, so I'm just using one of those knobs to go up and down that moves both of them, and then the other one that moves it sideways 
takes the centre point value, subtracts it from one servo and adds it to the other to give me that tilt. And of course the button still makes the eyes blink. So we can do sorts of things where we look at somebody and uh, do whatever or give it all sorts of um, sort of characteristics um, that make it sort of quite human-like. Right, I've mounted that head and it fits where I planned it to fit. I've had to uh, take the emergency stop button off that was on the front and it's going to be hidden behind the chest panels anyway, so that needs to be relocated. Now we've just got to make some brackets to put those chest panels on and we'll see how it looks. I've made a couple of brackets to hold that chest plate there and um, there's one on one side and one of course on the other side. One side is slightly longer because the bottom screw hole on this side is used for the potentiometer that measures the body lean front to back. And I've put these keyholes in so they fit to existing screw holes but we can actually just lift that chest and add plate off in one piece to get to the electronics below. And there's a couple of joining plates in the middle just to make sure it's not too wobbly. And those of course have had the actual panels subtracted so they fit the contours perfectly. So we'll get those printed and we should be able to finally put all of it together. So there are those two brackets. They've glued onto the uh, ab plate there and obvious mistake though, of course I can't get that off now. So of course my keyhole cutout works, but I now can't pull this forwards to take the panel off and this is actually stiffer than I thought. I thought it might flex so I could pull this over the screw head, but I can't. So on one side I'm going to have to cut little notches out where the screw holes are so it can come forwards and then I'll be able to just lift the chest plate off. Okay, so all of these pieces are glued together now. These are my red bits of tape that are holding all these features in so we can change them if we want to, but the rest is glued together so this is all now one piece. Well, I'm pretty sure that looks like Spider-Man. Pretty happy with the overall look at it at the moment. Obviously, there's a lot more pieces to attach. So a couple of people said they thought the head was too big because it's almost as big as my head. But actually, we've got quite big shoulder bells and things to come. We've got some kind of built-up shoulders with some flaps that open, probably with guns or something in there. And we've probably also got those extra spider tentacle things that Iron Spider has, which will come much later, of course. So the head is going to get a bit more overwhelmed by the other pieces. And we do of course have to do something about the back here, it's a bit naked at the moment. We've got this actuator that controls the body backwards and forwards to deal with covering, so he's probably going to end up with quite a big spine piece that comes up the back, and some kind of shoulders set back, and some robotic stuff to cover this. So somewhere between a kind of Iron Man and Spider-Man inspired type of robot. That's the end of this episode, but next time we need to remember that this is actually a robot and I haven't done much about the walking development and other things for a while. So next time we're going to actually integrate back with the control system. So at the moment I can control the arms with my three axis joystick. We need to build head control in for one mode and then a puppeteering mode that controls the head and the arms. So perhaps the head and the arms all move around together when I move that joystick with various buttons for the blinking or kind of a shift key that makes it do something else in one of those modes. And of course we can have almost infinite modes, in fact 65,000 uh, by scrolling up and down so we can have all sorts of different puppeteering motions. We also need to revisit actually making the robot walk with these cosmetics on. And one thing I haven't done is put any pressure switches or sensing on the bottom of the feet to sense when it's on the ground. So hopefully we can make something much more dynamic that will deal with more cosmetics as they're added. And we're going to look at that next time as well. If there's time, we might do more cosmetics for Spider-Man, but we really do need to make sure that the robot actually works. So don't forget to subscribe for more updates on this project and all the other projects. And also it's really important that my projects are funded through Patreon. So have a look at patreon.com slash xrobots and you can get access to some exclusive rewards. You'll get all my videos early, a live stream with me and various other sneak peeks and pics. All right, that's all for now.